Very early on in the pandemic, uh, Charlie Mashenter, who's the executive director of our denominational family, the Be In Christ Church of Canada, uh, he held a Zoom meeting with a bunch of us who are pastoral leaders and uh, he talked a little bit about uh, the implications of COVID for ministry in our churches. And um, I don't remember everything he said, but I remember very vividly two verses of scripture that he read uh, in that meeting. And that would have been back in March of 2020, almost two years ago now. And he read a couple of verses from Joshua chapter three. And uh, by the time you get to Joshua chapter three, Moses is dead and um, his apprentice, young Joshua is now the guy, he's now the leader in Israel. And in Joshua chapter three, the, the nation is kind of camped out alongside the Jordan and they're anticipating uh, moving into Canaan. And so Joshua gives advice uh, to the nation. He actually gives advice to his officers and his officers relay that advice to the people. And here's the advice, here's the two verses that Charlie read from Joshua chapter three. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Since you have never been this way before. That phrase has stuck in my head these last almost two years. And what a great and apt phrase for describing living in COVID and leading through COVID. We've never been this way before. And I feel a certain um, amount of pressure, I suppose, like my job title has the word lead in it. And I feel a certain pressure to be able to lead through these rather uncertain times. And I'd love to be able to say, hey friends, just follow me. I know exactly where we're going. But the fact is, I, I don't. I've never been this way before. Leading in COVID seems a little bit to me like a jigsaw puzzle. Now, I really don't do jigsaw puzzles. Um, I'm not very good at them. And I kind of lack the attention span to be able to, uh, to uh, complete a project like that. But my wife enjoys jigsaw puzzles and uh, she often has one on the go particularly this time of year in the winter um, and I'll sometimes watch her doing it and she'll be sitting there with this puzzle and there will be this jumble of pieces that all kind of look alike to me but never far from her is the box top and on the box top is the completed picture And it's so helpful when what you're dealing with is puzzle pieces to be able to see the box top, to see the, the, the completed picture, the, the finished picture. The trouble is when it comes to COVID, there's no box top. There's no completed picture. We've never been this way before. And so what we need to do really is to follow the advice that Joshua gave to the Israelites so long ago. Follow the Lord so you'll know which way to go because you've never been this way before. And so we follow Jesus. And yes, we follow Jesus imperfectly. I follow Jesus imperfectly. But he's such a gracious leader. He, he waits for us to, to catch up and to correct our course. And you know, Jesus knows the big picture. He sees the, the box top. I don't know what the next year is going to bring. I, I don't know what the next three months is going to bring. I, I don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I know Jesus. And he knows. He sees the big picture. He sees the box top. So I don't know tomorrow, but I know the one who does. And that's enough. It's enough. And so as a staff in um, seeking to discern the steps that Jesus would have us take, we felt that it was prudent 
um, uh, at this time to go from having three Sunday morning services to two. So rather than a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. in person, we're going to go to one in person service at 10 a.m., along with our usual online service at 10 a.m. as well. So one in person service at 10 a.m. and the online service at 10 a.m. as well. And we're going to begin this. Uh, one in-person service this coming Sunday, January 9th. And uh, for this in-person service, um, and for the, for the next while, we're not sure how long, but uh, we're gonna return to registering online in advance. And many of you have done that before. Uh, it's actually fairly easy. If you've not done it, you can uh, go to our website, sobblechurch.ca, you can click on events, and that will walk you through how to pre-register to attend the in-person service. Um, or you can um, use the Church Center app if you happen to have that on your phone. It's very, very slick. Uh, if you don't like either of those, you can just phone the church office and we'll happily uh, register you uh, for the in-person service. Now, the earlier in the week that you register, the better. It's really, really helpful for us, particularly uh, for our kids' ministry, like for Jenna and her team. If they can have kind of a reasonably accurate idea of how many kids are coming, say, you know, a couple of days in advance, really helps them plan. Really helps them also to uh, steward well their resources. And one reminder that I want to stress uh, is this. When you come to the building, bring your mask. And uh, as you enter the building, wear your mask. As you exit the building, wear your mask. And also wear your mask anytime that you're moving around in the building. Um, I'm fine when you're seated. If you want to remove your mask, maybe you're sipping a coffee or sipping some water or nibbling on a snack bar, that's completely fine. Many of you would prefer to leave your masks on while you're seated, that's completely fine. But for sure, as you enter the building, as you exit the building, and any time you're moving around the building, if you could wear your masks, that would be very, very helpful for us. And I don't like wearing a mask. Um, I don't know anybody who really does. And uh, they're kind of a pain, but we are really asking you to cooperate with us in this. I know some of you perhaps feel like uh, the efficacy of masks is pretty questionable. And maybe it is, I really don't know. Some of you maybe feel like um, having to wear a mask really infringes on your individual rights, and, and maybe it does. But I wanna, I wanna say just very quickly a couple of reasons why I think we need to wear our masks in the way that I've described. And neither reason has anything to do with um, public health or government. We're called as followers of Jesus to replicate the character of God. One of the attributes of God, one of the characteristics of God that we are called to replicate is mercy. God is merciful. And he calls us to be a merciful people. Mercy is made up of, of two things. It's made up of empathy and compassion. Empathy, M prefix means into. Pathy comes from pathos, meaning to suffer. And we know that uh, in this era of COVID, there are many who take it very, very seriously. There are some who've lost loved ones to COVID, others who've had friends and family members very, very ill with COVID. And there are some, several, in our in-person gatherings who are very um, aware of, um, of, of COVID and are very intense about protecting themselves and protecting others. So what does mercy do? What does mercy require of us in that situation? Well, it requires us to be empathic, to enter into the mindset of that person who is intense about COVID, to try and see life through their eyes, to try and feel what they're feeling, to, 
to try and say, well, if I was in that person's shoes, what would I want from people? What would I need from people? How would I want people to express love for me? How would I want them to see me and um, um, ascribe worth to me? And the second part of, uh, of mercy is compassion. Calm, the prefix means uh, alongside of, and again, the other part of the word comes from pathos, meaning to, to suffer. So empathy, we enter into, we try and see life through their eyes, and then we come alongside and we suffer with them. I think that's a good reason to wear a mask for the sake of others. Paul um, also, I think, gives us some great inspiration and um, wisdom as well in 1 Corinthians 9. Um, you know, so some people feel that masks are an infringement on their rights, and, and maybe that's the case. But Paul in 1 Corinthians 9 talks about his rights. Uh, as an apostle, he says, I've, I've got a right to this, and I've got a right to this, and I've got a right to this. But Paul ends up getting to the place in that chapter where he says, and I willingly lay aside my rights for the sake of others. When Paul had any inclination that his pursuit of his rights would put any kind of an obstacle in anybody's way in their um, worship of Jesus or their following of Jesus, he willingly laid aside what was his right for the sake of others. And so in the spirit of replicating the mercy of God and in the spirit of uh, the Apostle Paul, we're asking that that um, we wear our masks um, and wearing them properly, covering both mouth and nose. That would be so greatly appreciated. We've never been this way before, but we're seeking to follow the Lord Jesus. And he sees the box top. Love you, praying for you. Hope to see you soon.